So, uh, you know, a lot of people have been watching this uh, new movie, Bahubali. And uh, these epic movies are also making a lot of buzz on social media, in the news. And, and many of them have been asking me and curious to know about uh, how has been the life during the Mahabharata times. Since we have been doing a lot of programs on the Mahabharata, people are curious to know what is the kind of life that people led? If you look at the you know sequences that show the beauty of uh, Mahimadi land, it appears really grand and out of the world. Nothing compared to what we see around uh, today. So what was Indraprastha like? What was Hastinapura like? What is described in the Mahabharata about it? Or Ayodhya like for that matter in Ramayana? Uh, in fact, uh, there is a very, very uh, good thing to understand. Uh, these have been looked at as, uh, you know, epics and mythologies, but actually they are itihasas. Itihasas means it's captured as history, historical accounts. If we look at the uh, exact details of what has been described, a simple example, you know, uh, in the uh, in the movie, it seems like the uh, grandeur is simply too good to be true. But actually, if you look at the uh, epic details, the details are even grander, you know, much more than uh, generally can be imagined. Uh, for example, uh, the description of Ayodhya that has been given is a case in point. So in Ramayana, in Valmiki Ramayana, the description of Ayodhya is uh, given to be, it was uh, three yojanas in width and 12 yojanas in length. One yojana is eight miles or roughly about 13 kilometers. Now about 38, 39 kilometers in width and 150, uh, around 150, 153 uh, kilometers in length. This comes to about, about 6,000 square kilometers in area. Wow, that feel like, you know, you have New Delhi, which is about 1,400 or 500 square kilometers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think even the largest city, Tokyo, is like about uh, 1,800 or, or 2,000 2, square, 2, 2, square. 2, square kilometers. So Tokyo, the largest city, is 2,200 square kilometers and not fully populated. It is densely populated, but still there are vast stretches of lands. This is not just the city, but the whole, uh, all the prefectures put together. And New Delhi is not just the city New Delhi, but the NCR region put together is 1,800 square kilometers. Or for example, New York is about 1,200 square kilometers. That's the current, you know, standard. While we are talking of something much grander, like 6,000 square kilometers, Ayodhya. So that is of, you know, magnitude. The difference in scale is simply staggering and heavily populated, densely populated, and the whole thing is described as fortified. The whole thing, the Great Wall of China, is not just China. The whole thing is fortified with, uh, you know, extremely good fortification, and the whole thing surrounding uh, the whole city, uh, its uh, moats are there. And uh, the gates of entry, the dwaras are well designated. There are specific gates of entry and exit. There are visa requirements to enter. And uh, it attracts the city, attracts the best in class, in all classes of people, the best artists, the best artisans, the best entertainers, the best minds, brains, scientists, the best uh, statesmen, administrators, everyone the best in class it attracts from all over the world. So is it mentioned in the Mahabharata too? It's mentioned in the Mahabharata as well. For example, Hastinapura is mentioned as a great city. Indraprastha, the design of the Indraprastha is mentioned as having 32 dwaras of entry, fully fortified, having regions, for example, Ayodhya and uh, Indraprastha, Dwaraka is mentioned in glowing terms. Each has cantonments, for example, you know, uh, just now, uh, just as we have cantonment regions, uh, for uh, military uh, practices and so on. There are well-designated uh, educational districts. There are well-designated, uh, you know, uh, say learning centers spread throughout. There are well-designated marketplaces for trade, uh, commercial activity. There are well-designated fields and so on. And uh, with a lot of biodiversity, with a lot of uh, birds, uh, flora and fauna, uh, with a lot of uh, natural uh, flowers that pleases the eyes and the... Uh, the aromatic uh, flavors spread all through the city and uh, 
very well protected protected against uh, you know the natural calamities like fire uh, earthquake uh, cyclones and so on those are typically called adi dhavika the natural obstacles and adi bhautika social obstacles in terms of you know well protected against uh, say uh, uh, social unrest so that everyone is taken care of very well so that and it's boisterous with a lot of entertainment and a lot of activity vigorous activity excellent medicine excellent education uh, excellent trade if the entire ecosystem is one that leads to prosperity that's what is fully mentioned for example in dwaraka it's mentioned that the uh, the skyscrapers used to touch the clouds and with a lot of silver and gold and well laid out roads broad roads that 16 chariots could move simultaneously and you how can, big were the chariots like uh, chariots were not just you know what is described uh, as uh, you know two wheels and tod 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 not exactly that way again the chariots are different in sizes based on the uh, capacity of the person uh, the economic capacity and the wealth of that person so you have a maharathi having chariots very wide except you know loaded with arms and weapons and everything you know and different chariots for different purposes so that takes us to you know now we have cars the chariots and uh, uh, you know different people can afford different types of cars you know uh, not many can afford a rolls royce or a mercedes benz and with narrow roads you cannot own a mercedes benz you know or a, a porsche uh, car so likewise uh, very good descriptions are available which show a lot of prosperity and military power and strategy and a lot of uh, you know good growth progress it's a very progressive state that has been mentioned in the uh, itihasas and puranas so what strikes about these epic movies and what is much talked about is the depiction of war in these movies they appear grand at the same time they also appear very scary and gory so can you talk a little bit about the mahabharata war and the scale to which it, uh, it is described in the text the war you know for many people war is exciting no you know many people also criticize that all of our uh, economic activity our scientific activity most of it is around defense around military around uh, around uh, defense spending for example even the internet which we are using uh, came out as uh, data net you know out of defense uh, spending you know the data network in those times war has been described in gruesome detail as well for example the mahabharata vyasa maharishi clearly describes so many aspects war was not uh, it involved all the best minds to strategize and uh, you know position oneself in a, a point of advantage so and the numbers involved are also huge for example the casualties mentioned in mahabharata war is staggering by any standards which most of us uh, live in a linear mode of understanding linear mode of uh, understanding time and space time and causation Where we think that uh, earlier we were barbaric, uh, not populated, uh, the earth was all full of forest, trees, and so on. But actually, if we look at uh, the world over history, all the lands were well populated. There were many ancient civilizations for which records are there. But right now we go only with archaeological evidence. Uh, right now, a uh, simple example is uh, right. We are talking right now. Say four thousand years down the line. people were to look at and there is a large scale destruction uh, you know destruction let's uh, imagine 5000 years down the line people try to imagine what sort of life we would have led in current times what would remain as per as per uh, archaeology archaeological evidence at least this laptop will not remain this discussion would not remain all of what we know even these structures concrete structures would not remain none of what we assume take for granted would remain 5000 years later and hence what remains would be some granite some uh, mud pots and so on you know even most of the uh, uh, asti the bones would have uh, gone away so that's what we are so what is the at. what is the number of people so the number of just people just to get an idea of yeah so uh, in the uh, stri parva uh, dhritarashtra the king of uh, hastinapura uh, the uh, father of duryodhana 
ask uh, Yudhishthira, what are the number of uh, casualties? How many people died in the war? For which Yudhishthira gives a very startling number. He says 1 billion, 660 million and 20,000 warriors perished in the war. 1 billion, 660 million and 20,000 warriors. And mind you, this was the Dharma Yuddha where Kshatriyas and a few other castes, you know, uh, other classes fought in the war. But the women, children, elderly and other professions were, you know, could continue their activities undisturbed. It was like a concentrated war, just 18 days and 1.66 billion people gone off the face of the earth. And it was a world war, not just uh, within uh, the subcontinent. It was a world war where Yamanas, Greeks, nature, so many, uh, uh, you know, people participated. So it's like, you know, these movies typically depict these really strong people who have multiple capabilities. You know, they shoot, uh, say, 10 arrows at a time. They have these specialized weapons. So can you talk about, like, Bhishma is known for his prowess, right? So can you exactly. just... Uh, See, uh, that is a beautiful case in point because these are uh, considered superheroes. Mm -hmm. Superheroes who had exceptional strength, who had exceptional training and capability. And from day one of their birth, they were focused. That was the idea of Swadharma. You need to be excellent at what you do. Right now, our focus towards meritorious, uh, you know, Swadharma is not so very great. We are more mediocre. But then the focus, the, the intensity of focus was such that you had exceptionally capable people handling everything, right? From knowledge, you would be exceptionally focused. And hence, your capability would be exceptional. Power of arms, your focus would be exceptional. And hence, your uh, capability would be exceptional. So Bhishma, for example, he was a Pitamaha, great-grandfather. But still, he participated in the war. And he had promised Duryodhana that every day, it was an 18-day war, Okay. 10 days he was the commander-in-chief and every day of his being the commander-in-chief he had promised that he would eliminate 10,000 ratis. Oh my God. So, so 10,000 ratis means those who fight on a chariot because okay. he, he had formulated the rules of the war mm. based on previous formulations. Everyone had agreed the, and hence the one of the rules was that a rati should match a rati. Okay. That uh, you know they can fight only amongst uh, uh, themselves. So 10,000 if you imagine. Let's say from sunrise to sunset, because after sunset you could not fight, at least during Bhishma's uh, 10 days. Sunrise to sunset, and it was towards, uh, you know, towards the, uh, let's say, October, September, October, yeah. November. Mm -hmm. And hence, uh, the day was also a little shorter, shorter yes. okay, not like uh, summer time. Okay. Uh, because that was also considered, even by current standards, uh, you know, uh, from that time, from about October to uh, April is considered the ideal time for war, you know, even now, as per military mm -hmm. standards. Uh, you don't want to fight during rainy season. Yeah. You don't want to fight uh, during exceptional uh, summer season yes. because you get drained. So, at that, in that period, let's uh, imagine that uh, the sunrise to sunset at about 10 hours. Okay, yeah. so 10 hours, 10,000 warriors, 10,000 ratis, and uh, all moving targets, nothing is static, it's not what you imagine to be, in, in, not that way at all, it's, it's grand, mm -hmm. beyond imagination, and these are serious uh, professionals, very professionals, very skilled, very capable, very powerful, awesomely powerful, and awesomely magnanimous, you know, these are the uh, people that we are talking about, so 10,000 ratis means, in an hour, thousand rupees. Mm. That means in a minute, thousand by sixty, or hundred by six is uh, about uh, eighteen, yeah. about twenty rupees every minute. Twenty means it comes down to about uh, every three four seconds one rupee. Right. Every three four seconds one rupee and continuous non-stop. Okay. You know, from sunrise to sunset, and that. If you need to just pull out an arrow, fix, aim, and there's not a static object, and with a lot of, imagine a lot of sound, this is that, everything going on simultaneously, you also need to protect yourselves, your horses, your charioteer, your, uh, you know, on your flanks, those who are, all your dependents you need to protect, and plus also you need to uh, intelligently maneuver uh, everywhere, you know, wherever you need to go, it's not static. Imagine everything is dynamic. 
and on the, the same time you need to assess uh, you know your uh, uh, ammunition arms and ammunition your stock what's your stock what's remaining all of that the logistics also uh, Bhishma needs to handle all of this and he's targeting three you know in three four seconds Mantrati. it means stringing uh, you know uh, taking the arrow you know holding the uh, bow and then releasing and hitting the target moving it's described in such a manner that nobody could see him lift the uh, okay that's know, weapon that's swift. that's swift and uh, imagine you're doing it you know two three times is okay but uh, you do, uh, you're doing it from sunrise to you know daybreak to day uh, end and non-stop at that age he's a pitamaha then what sort of uh, even physical power not just mental power you need clarity you need complete focus of mind you need all of that yeah, going you know, the decision making, decision -making, -making. and uh, taking care of uh, a zillion parameters at then the same time you need to have a 360 degree vision 360 degree of. vision right. because otherwise you could be uh, just uh, chopped off anytime yes. so it's a war and in 18 days 1.66 billion people that means so much activity happening all around and also you need philosophical clarity if you don't have philosophical insights so much bloodshed, you will lose your heart. Okay. He's a commander in chief. If he loses heart, everyone loses heart. He cannot afford to do so. And this is just one person. Yeah. So we are talking of such people, such grand people. So that is the scale at which we are looking at. And hence, I'm not surprised uh, that uh, in this movie, it's depicted in a grandiose manner. But what is, it is, it is, Till the tip of an iceberg. Correct, correct, correct. What is depicted in our Itihasas, Puranas is way beyond our current, you know, capability. To even depict, imagine and depict. Imagine. But I think this will give us a taste when people this go back and read the war, read about the war again. I think then it will make a lot of, uh, lot of sense. sense. Lot of sense. I have more questions on the city logistics and the war logistics, but maybe I'll reserve it to another uh, okay. video.